is coming to President Biden's rescue against the media. <laughs> In a new bo book, Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain, claims, quote, there are times when he feels that God dealt him a terrible hand, worse than FDR. Klain also ripping into the media for causing what he calls panic when reporting on supply chain issues. So how's this for bad press? Newsweek says, whisper it, but Joe Biden had a brilliant year. And CNN doing some investigative reporting on the Biden family beach vacation, writing, quote, the first couple are beach people, said a family friend familiar with their vacation preferences. Others who know them well said there is little more they enjoy when relaxing than pitching an umbrella on the beach, tossing a towel onto the sand, and closing their eyes under a warm sun. God. And we can't forget about Kamala, the liberal media, defending the VP. There's a lot of inherent misogyny and racism in the way that news is reported, in the way that people read news. It's a problem that has dogged vice president. And president, very complicated job, right? It's not the president, right? You're not supposed to be president. You're supposed to work for the president. I interviewed Vice President Harris on Monday, and she reflected yes. on her accomplishments as vice president so far and pointed out how a lot of what she does hasn't received much media coverage. She's our future, and I think she needs to be seen. And uh, we know she's doing things, but nobody talks about it. Do, nobody talks about it, Kennedy. <laughs> Their secret. All the amazing things she's doing, they keep it all hush-hush because -hush she's that good. No, we see her plenty. We, we see her incompetence and her arrogance on display when she tries to string simple words together. She, she doesn't create sentences. She creates word salads. She could open a salad buffet and make a, a handsome sum <laughs> on, on the illiterate nonsense that she spews on everything from uh, the budget to inflation to immigration. She has been completely AWOL on immigration and shame on her. And anyone who says that she was given that job because of misogyny and racism needs to go away and not be a part of the discussion. It doesn't matter what your background is when you're vice president, when you're tasked with something this important, you better deliver. You better deliver for the people in this country and for the people who are dying to get here. So true, Katie. Uh, it is a pity party over there at the White House. <laughs> so Joe Biden complains that he was dealt a bad hand. Yeah. But w wait a minute. Uh, he, he mentioned COVID. COVID was his bad. COVID got him elected. Yeah, COVID got elected. He had an easy campaign, didn't have to leave his house uh, for it. He was handed a recovery, economic recovery, on a silver platter from the previous administration. Uh, he had a lot going for him when he got into, into office. But imagine what his approval rating would be. It's in the low 40s. If the media actually went after him at this, with the same vigor as they went after President Trump, whether it's on his policies, the Afghanistan debacle, the economy, his war on energy, but also they've been quite lenient on his family and his connections to Hunter Biden when it's in plain written emails that he was a business partner of his and asked for a key uh, to their office building. I mean, the idea that Joe Biden has had it easy in terms of the press is absolutely laughable. And also, you know, reporters used to believe that President Trump was waging a war on the First Amendment, blah, 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 blah. Joe Biden doesn't give them the access that they want. He hardly holds a press conference. He hardly shows up. Uh, the, his doctor has not been made available for briefing, even when the president had COVID. It goes on and on and on. So he's gotten a, a, a pretty easy ride when it comes to the media coverage of what they say are accomplishments. Yeah, Richard, I mean, we don't need them to go as hard on Biden as on Trump. But we're asking for a little more than the beach people stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I think that I hate these type of the media is tough on the president because I think the media's job is to be tough on whoever the president. That's why the media has a whole building in the White House, right? They have a whole section where they question the president. They pepper whoever the president is with questions. Uh, I think it's also worth pointing out here that if you were to talk to folks from either the Obama administration or the Trump administration, they would kill for... Joe Biden's record of bipartisan accomplishments. And I'll read some of them to you. Oh, boy. Um, he passed the, infra, the, the, bi, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. He passed a bill to help veterans who got impacted by burn pits. He decreased the price of prescription drugs. He passed a bill to produce semiconductors in the United States. There's been no government shutdown under Joe Biden. He also, um, you know, passed <laughs> wow, the holiday. Wow, that's the threat. Hold on. <laughs> uh, there was also a, a national holiday for Juneteenth. He passed gun, gun safety legislation. And the list goes on and on of things that he's done bipartisanly with Democrats and Republicans working across the aisles to get them done. 
Trump would have liked to have that. Trump really wanted an infrastructure bill, didn't get it. And Barack Obama would have wanted any of these things that didn't get them. Wow. Richard, you're reading that list like, you know, the side effects in a Chantix commercial there. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you may experience the following. No, I, I got this feeling you're going to come to me next. Yes, okay. Joey. <laughs> I, I don't fully disagree with Richard, and that might surprise some people. Um, Biden has been effective at whipping the Senate Republicans pretty well. Yes. And, and so we look at this budget they just passed. I mean, so what was the option they had there? They could have done a continuing resolution, I believe it's called, and, and uh, funded the government through basically the inauguration of the next Congress where Republicans would have owned the budget at that point in the House, but the Senate Republicans jumped ship like it was sinking for the Titanic. And the reason why is, here's the, here's the gig, guys. Senate Republicans do not care to spend money as long as you're spending money on what they want. And, and senators kind of in general, but you would expect the Republicans to, I don't know, be honest about their, their talking points on spending. You have a lot of Republicans that complain about the border that, pa that voted for a, a budget that explicitly kept border security out of the Border Patrol funding. So, you know, if you, if you have Republicans in the Senate that aren't willing to fight for anything, I mean, what did Biden's biggest accomplishment, or Kamala Harris's biggest accomplishment is probably being the 51st vote in the Senate, right? And then Biden's probably biggest accomplishment is... Uh, taking Joe Manchin to the whipping post. <laughs> Joey, I was just getting ready to agree with you, but where I disagree with you is I think the reason why Mitch McConnell cut this deal is because at this point in time, he's not even sure who the Speaker of the House is going to be because Republicans in the House aren't sure who had the Speaker he, of the House is he, going to be. But had he worked with Kevin McCarthy... Is it Kevin McCarthy, Kevin McCarthy got, might not be the Speaker. Kevin McCarthy would have got a short-term <laughs> win if they would have pushed the budget forward. I think that would have solidified him the Speaker race, but, uh, well, but it would have caused right a world of crap for him well, afterwards. Yeah. Neither one of them wanted it because they don't want to have to fight. And, That's no, and Richard, no one's going to defend the, the Republicans in Congress. <laughs> anyway, okay. Hey, Sean Hannity.